Capturon 20 has arrived. The previous version is Capturon 12. They decided to go from 12 to 20 without going through 13 to 19. I was hoping for a major upgrade in terms of features. But to be honest with you, I am a little bit disappointed by this upgrade. So today in this video, let's talk about Capture One 20. Hello everyone, my name is Ming. Welcome to another video. If you are new to my channel, please check out the description below for more information. Today, we are going to talk about Capture One 20. First of all, in my opinion, Capture One 20 is definitely not a major upgrade in terms of features. I think it is only incremental upgrade when you compare Capture One 20 to Capture One 12. If you look at the new features introduced in Capture One 20, most of those already exist in Lightroom already. For example, the direct color editing tool, and then the new cropping tool, the black slider and the white slider, etc. To me, I think Capture One 20 is designed more towards Lightroom users instead of Capture One 12 existing users. I think the goal of Capture One 20 is to make the migration process easier for Lightroom, for Lightroom users to migrate to Capture One 20. By the way, if you're wondering what's new in Capture One 20, there are already a lot of videos covering that. I will put a video right here at the top or in the description below. However, when you compare Capture One 20 to Lightroom, I think there are still some key features missing in Capture One 20. Especially for landscape photographers, I think HDR merge and a panorama stitch features are still missing in Capture One 20. I switched from Lightroom to Capture One 10 a couple years ago and at that point I found those features, uh, I really want those features in Capture One and I really hope they included those features in Capture One 11, they didn't do it, Capture One 12, they didn't do it and, and now we have Capture One 20 and they still didn't do it. So I was a little bit disappointed by they exclude those features out of this Capture One 20 release. So for me, in order to do HDR blending or panorama stitch, I have to export TIFF files and then bring those files into Photoshop and do everything in Photoshop. Now you can do focus stacking via some third-party plugin called Helicon Focus, but Capture One 20 doesn't come with focus stacking feature natively. But of course, Capture One also has some advantages over Lightroom. I have a list of ad advantages of Capture One. So for example, the first is advanced color editing tool. I really enjoyed using the advanced color editing tool in Capture One because you can just click any color in the photo and then you can select a color range and then you can work on the hue, saturation, and the lightness. Very, very convenient to use. And the second feature I really like about Capture One is the photos look much sharper and cleaner by default, giving you a great starting point. And then if you are a Fuji user, Capture One renders Fuji RAW files much, much better than Lightroom, in my opinion. And then also I think Capture One gives you more flexible tools such as levels and curves. I really enjoy using those tools. And then also Capture One gives you layers, although I think layers work better than the local adjustments in Lightroom, but the layers in Capture One uh, are, not, uh, are not as powerful as layers in Photoshop. Compared to Lightroom, Capture One has advantages as well as disadvantages depending on what you do. If you do a lot of panorama stitch, HDR merge, or focus stacking, then I would say Lightroom is probably still a better option because it can save the final result as a, a raw file, which is fantastic. On the other hand, if you do a lot of color editing on a single file, then I would say Capture One might be a little bit better because it has more, more powerful fo uh, color editing tools. Now, if we look at some other raw file editors on the market, I think the competition is getting stronger. We have Luminar 4, which is all about artificial intelligence. Luminar 4 introduced AI sky replacement, which is appealing to many landscape photographers and architecture photographers. And then we have uh, On One Photo Raw, which you can do everything inside one software. And then Lightroom, of course, the most popular raw file editor and then capture one i think capture one needs to bring up more features to keep up the competition that's why i am a little bit disappointed by this capture one 20 release now the question is should i get capture one 20 
Capture One 20 has its own pros and cons when compared to Lightroom. So if you have never tried Capture One before, I would encourage you to give it a try. It provides 30 day free trial. You can use the link in the description below to download the free trial. And after 30 days free trial, if you don't like it, then you, you just delete the software. It doesn't cost you anything. Especially if you are a Fujifilm user, I would definitely recommend Capture One over Lightroom. Now, if you are already using Capture One 12, should you upgrade to Capture One 20? That's a totally different question. Like I said earlier, I think Capture One 20 is designed more towards uh, Lightroom users instead of existing Capture One users. I'm totally happy with Capture One 12 and uh, there's no single feature in Capture One 20 that's strong enough to convince me to upgrade. So at this point, I don't think I'm going to upgrade to Capture One 20. With that being said, if you found something in Capture One 12 that really bothers you and it got improved in Capture One 20, definitely go upgrade because it can make your life easier. All right, that's my thoughts on Capture One 20. What do you think? Is it worth switching? Is it worth upgrading? Let me know in the comments below. That's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up button below. And if if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. All right, guys, enjoy photography. Bye for now.